All right, in this video, we're gonna finally start working on the actual graph itself. And in this video, we are going to create the bar graphs. I just did release this component on Dark Skittle, so go ahead and pick it up, start messing around with it. Uh, up until this point, hopefully you have seen the weather graphs introduction video, as well as the part one, where I have showed you and explained to you all these global variables, because we will be using these now to create our actual graph. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here is that same component that we worked on in part one where we had all of those global variables and I've only added one additional, yes, another one. And it's just there for the purpose of you being able to adjust your stationary lines that we're gonna have on our graph, our horizontal lines, a way for you to easily adjust all of those at one time. So that's another number global variable is called stationary width or stat WID. Um, that's going to adjust our horizontal lines. So let's get started. Over in items, inside of our component, we will always be making stuff inside of this component. I'm going to add a shape, and I'm going to call this shape the background. This is going to be the background of our entire piece. So for this background, let's make it a rectangle. And I'm going to make it the entire width of the screen. And for the height, this is one that we can adjust using one of our number global variables. And we're going to use the whole height and not the graph height. Don't use the graph height yet, use the whole height. So there we go, there's our whole height. Let's go to paint. Let's change its color to the BG color that we've created. All right, so there's our whole piece. Now we're gonna have the graph sitting inside of this and we're still gonna have some room around the edges to put other weather information. So back inside of this component, let's add an overlap group. We're gonna work on our stationary lines. And to keep this organized, we are gonna be using some overlap groups to keep everything uh, in its little piece and organized. So inside of the stationary lines overlap group, let's go ahead and add a rectangle. Now that we have two number global variables for our stationary lines, um, I'm gonna add that one over here. Remember we did add one called stat width. So that's going to be the width of our stationary line. So now we have a long stationary line and then we have the stationary thickness number global variable. So that made it very thin. I'm just gonna go back and adjust this number global variable just for the sake of this video so that we can see it a little bit clearer on the screen. But before we do that, let's go ahead and adjust the paint of this and that is going to be our if we look at our colors over here, we have a couple of them. Um, the max color and min color we don't want to use, the graph. I could have called this stat for stationary, but this is the one I'm going to be using for the color of my stationary lines. So selecting graph. All right. And like I said, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to bump up the thickness of this stationary line so that we can see it a little bit better in this video. All right, so it looks like the color changed on us a little bit when I was doing that. If I go up here and I look at my graph color, my graph color, that's the stationary line color, it is a little bit darker. So that's what I'm gonna be using for the sake of this video so you can see all this stuff. So back inside of the stationary lines overlap group, let's copy and paste this. Therefore, we're maintaining all of those number global variables that we applied and the color but now we're going to bump this rectangle up to not the very top of the whole piece, but we're gonna bump it up based off of graph height. So I'm gonna to go to this rectangle, I'm gonna to go to its position, and since I want this to be my top stationary line, we wanna apply some bottom padding. And as you can see there, as I do that, it is moving this line up. Well, how high do we wanna move this up? I'm going to use a number global variable, and I'm gonna use the graph height. This is where we want to use that. Now, hopefully you notice that this is how high our graph is gonna be. But since we have a number global variable, we can bump this up to make it go higher, or we can move it down to make it go lower. But ultimately, we wanna have some room to work around this thing. And that's exactly what the graph height and the stationary width, this new number global variable that we added, it's gonna give us that room that we want to work inside of this entire piece. So now that we have that one adjusted, let's go and I'll copy and paste that one. And what we wanna do with this one is we want to put this new line in between these two. So over to position, I'm gonna go down to that bottom padding that I have here. I wanna take that global variable off, 
but we're going to use a calculator or the function tool. So the function tool is going to be this. Clicking on our calculator for bottom padding, we want to apply the following code. We want to go half of GV graph height. That's going to put a line, and based on our number global variable, it's always going to be in between the middle line and the top line. Let's check that. And now you can see here that we have this darker line right smack in between the middle and the top. Let's repeat this for two more lines using bottom padding. So I'm going to copy and paste that line I just made, go into its position. And now we want to take away the bottom padding that we had on this, and we want to use it for top padding instead. And again, we want to make sure that this is zero now. But for top padding, this is going to bump this line down. That line right here is what we're bumping down. So I'm going to go ahead and use the one half graph height again. So there is that stationary line. And now copying and pasting one more time. We're going to apply the number global variable for graph height. That's going to put this one at the very bottom. So under position, take off the calculator tool and let's actually apply the number global variable. So there we go. These are our stationary lines. And now that we have all of this stuff organized inside of a stationary lines overlap group, it's going to be real easy to go back and, you know, uh, if we need to make some adjustments. But let me go ahead and show you something right now. Over in globals, we can adjust our widths. And notice all of these are adjusting the same. Uh, not only that, if I go to my graph height, I can make the graphs taller. And by us using those codes and number globals, everything stay in proportional. That's what was key about using so many number global variables back in part one. That's just one key piece for this whole thing. So now let's go back to our items and let's add our numbers over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to call this uh, left numbers or whatever. So let's add an overlap group. All right, so inside of this overlap group, we're going to put three numbers, or at least that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put my three-day max up here. That was this no, uh, text global. My three-day min here, and I'm also going to put the mid temp. Uh, right here in the middle and we're going to use again some positions with our codes and our globals number globals to get all of this to stay the same no matter how we adjust it so inside of that left numbers overlap group I'm going to add a text item now I do not have anything set for a font or text size so you may want to go back assuming you're familiar with uh, font globals and other number globals, we could easily add those as well. But I think we have plenty of globals as it is right now. So for this text item, I'm gonna to come to this one and I'm just going to use the mid temp first of all. The mid temp, there's not much uh, coding to do with that one, but 54 is the midway point between our three day max and our three day min. Now I'm definitely gonna bump this size up a little bit. Again, it would have been good to probably use a number global variable for that. But I think we did do a text color, didn't we? And whatever it was set to. So something remotely white. But I want this over here on the left side of my uh, card or my whole piece. So what we're gonna do is we're not going to position, we're not gonna position the text item. Notice I'm in my left numbers overlap group. I want to position the entire overlap group center left. So that's gonna put that 54 right over here. That's our mid temp and it's right on our mid line because by default, you know, everything's centered when we position stuff. I just did center left to push it over to the left. Maybe we want a little bit of uh, left padding to bump it out a little bit, maybe not that much. Again, it depends on how wide you have your stationary lines as well, right? So something around there is what I wanna do for this part. So back inside of the left numbers overlap group, I'm going to copy and paste. And now I have another mid temp, but now for this one, I want to do three day max. So our three day max is 73. Well, we want that 73 to show up up here. So under position, I'm going to go to bottom padding and I'm going to apply the number global variable graph height. So that's gonna put the 73 right along that stationary, that top stationary line. Let's repeat this for three day men. 
So 35 is our three day min. That's up here because I copied that three day max one. Position, take off the bottom padding number global and apply that same number global to top padding. So there's our 35 down there. So everything's starting to kind of look like what I showed you back at the beginning. Of course, the colors are a little bit different, but hopefully you can see everything all right. Speaking of that, what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm going to go adjust these so that maybe the contrast will look a little bit better as we progress through the rest of this tutorial. So I'm gonna back out of here, go to my colors and adjust some of these things. So maybe that helped a little bit. Uh, we got the yellow on the black. Um, I did adjust my max and min colors as well, so we can just get a little bit more of that contrast. Hopefully you can see this a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and work on our dates at the bottom that show our max and min temps. So back inside of our component, let's add yet another overlap group and let's call this one dates. Inside of dates, we are going to add a text item. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, the date for one day away. This is going to be the one that's going to be on the left side of our graph. So whatever uh, date format you want to use, I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to do click on this one. I like my months to be first. I like my days to be second. And maybe you want to do a day of the week or something like that, but I'm just going to do 1027. Um, today is the 27th, so what we have to do here is comma advance one day is how I think about that. And then also what I want here are the max and min temps here. So I'm going to go to weather forecast and I'm going to take that uh, max, click that in. I don't want to see the Fahrenheit symbol. Uh, maybe I don't even want to see the degree symbol, but I, I know in my mind that it's going to be, you know, the max temperature here, but I want it for one day away. And then I'm going to put a little slash and I'm going to do WF min for one day away. And I'm going to come in here and delete this space. All right, so there's our date, our max, and our min. Now, that may be a little bit confusing to you, but again, the top piece is the date for one day away. This is the max for one day away and the minimum for one day away. Um, don't let the little fraction bars uh, confuse you there. So I want to center this up. That's going to center the dates and the max and min temps. Um, i tell you what I'm going to do. Instead of me doing uh, the month number, I'm going to come add an extra M. Now I have October, and I'm going to take away that slash, um, October 28th. So maybe that looks a little bit better. So it's centered up. I'm going to go to paint, change it to text color. And now what we want to do here, inside of this dates overlap group, we want to position this at the bottom since I want my dates to be at the bottom, maybe you want to apply a little bit of bottom padding. And since this is going to be the one on the far left side, now I know that's very small, but it's there, October 28th with the high and the low for October 28th. I wanna shoot this over here, but we have to be careful about how we apply this padding. I want to leave this entire dates overlap group at the bottom with that bottom padding, but back in the items, I want to shoot just this text item. Just this text item, I want to apply some right padding. I want to bump it over to the left by applying some right padding. We're going to use another number global variable, the one that we called padding. Very important. Now, it didn't bump it over too far to the left, but we can go in and adjust that padding number global to bump it over farther, and we'll come back and do that after we create our next two date pieces. So let's take that piece we just created. Let's copy and paste. Let's go ahead and do the date for two days away, as well as the max and min for two days away. So this is October 29th. Now it turns out this text item needs no padding whatsoever. So I'm gonna leave it in the uh, center and with no padding at all because the only thing we have, we applied the bottom padding to the entire overlap group. We haven't done any bottom padding to the text items. So that's gonna put that one in the center, copy and paste. And let me show you something cool here. I just learned this. This date here, I wanna replace all these twos with threes. Sometimes this can be helpful if you uh, select all. And let's go to replace. 
and let's search for twos and let's replace them with threes. So boom, just like that, all those twos got replaced with threes. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so there's the October one. Now we got to go to, uh, for this one, the October 30th, which is three days away. Let's apply some left padding and let's use the padding number global. So now we have these spaced apart nicely. Um, definitely we want to go ahead and bump these over. So back inside of our component, let's put some space in between these by going and adjusting our padding number global variable. And as you can see, those dates are moving uh, apart. But yet the, the middle one, since we had no padding added to that, everything's staying nice. So somewhere around probably uh, 420 would be good. So from this point, we are now finally ready to create the bar graph. I'm gonna uh, put this one on pause, take a break. I'm gonna work on part uh, two where we actually create the bar graphs um, just due to the length of the video. So I'll be back soon and that's it for this video. I hope it helped.